Okay, so <coughs> there are five parts, and I think what I'm going to do is I'll, is I'll describe to you um, the first part, you'll have a go, and then I'll describe to you the second part and, and do it like that, because there's actually quite a lot of clicking about and, um, and settings to do. So first, first of all, to check the clock, clock likiness. Um, first of all, I want you to create a neighbour joining tree in Mega. And I want you to use um, particular models. Um, when you've made, I'll show you a little bit more about this in a moment, by the way. Um, when you've made that tree, you need to save it in both the Mega native format and also export to NUIC format. The reason for the NUIC format is that that's the thing that the program Pathogen uses. So you open the NUIC tree in Pathogen, add time information to the sequences. I'll show you that in a moment. Find the best fitting route, plot the diversity with respect to time, and then look to see what the estimated clock rate is. So within here, there should be practical data. And within here, there should be a thing called original data. So this is this FASTA file is the file that you want to make the tree from. What you'll find within that um, within that whole directory, although you will be generating your own files as you go, I've actually put the files from each, for each stage in that directory so that so firstly what you should do is say when you make something save it to your m drive and don't overwrite what's on here um, but secondly it means if for some reason there's some software hiccup which you know could happen because you know it's bioinformatics um, then you can start to, you know with a file from the new stage okay so um, if you open up mega and open, oh, excuse me, no, I don't want to update anything, um, and, and open that FASTA file, dot .fast, that's FASTA file. When it opens, actually click align rather than analyze to open it, and then you'll get the alignment um, window. From here, you can do phylogenetic analyses, um, it is actually protein coding, not that we'll use that. Click yes. And then, so it's kind of activated the data. Then you can go back to here, click phylogeny. Just construct a neighbor joining tree. This morning you did maximum likelihood tree, but you, just neighbor joining tree will do for this. Yes, I would like to use that. Now, here's where you set those preferences. Okay, so what I'll do is, oh yes, those are the preferences that I want you to use. Um, when you've made your tree, what I want you to do is open it in Pathogen. The Pathogen software is, in, is on the C drive, so training software, software, Pathogen. Okay, so you click Pathogen and it's asking you to open a file. So it, what you want to do is open that NUIC file you have made. So in this case, I'm, I'm actually going to go back to, um, hopefully you've saved it on your M drive, but in case it all terribly go, goes terribly wrong, um, this is the neighbor joining tree I made earlier. So what it's done is it's read the tree in, but now it's asking you to say what is the date of each sequence. But what I've cunningly done, which is why these are terribly, terribly long sequence names, is I've put the date at the end of the sequence names. So what you do is you click Guess Dates, and the date is defined by numerical field in the taxon label, that is, defined just by its order because it's at the end so you click last and it has found the dates okay so you might want to check that nothing's 
bad has happened. What, what it does is it finds the, um, the latest date and it says, okay, that's at a height zero and then the other dates compared to that latest date. Great, so, so, that, so that's, that's the um, dates of the sequences in there. Then you click on this small tab here, Analysis, and it shows you a picture of the tree. If, without touching anything else, you then go to Root to Tip, you start to see all of those points plotted against time and genetic distance. However, if you go back to Tree and click Find Me the Best Fitting Root, what it does is it tries to choose a slightly different root of the tree in order to make the root to tip the most, the best fit line through here. And if you click show ancestor traces, you're now showing, so this is a tip sequence and this is its trace back to the ancestor. So you can see this one is, might be a little odd, it's sticking out a little bit, whereas something like this one is very good. So there's our root tip sequences and then the slope of the line is shown here. Um, if you want to save this, I actually find the best way to save these images is just to do print screen and then crop the image and stick it into Word if that's what you want to do.